Hello everyone and welcome back to SFC Fan TV. On deadline day, Sunderland managed to complete the signing of Jamie Tierney from Fleetwood Town. And joining me uh, to discuss the transfer and give us all the latest on the new midfielder is Ben from Cods Logs. Um, ben, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks Jack. Thanks for having me on and uh, yeah, ready to talk about about Jay. A hectic transfer window for both clubs and you know, a hectic transfer Last day, even though it didn't go quite as we expected at Fleetwood, it was um, a busy day for all involved. No, thanks for coming on, mate. I mean, I, I guess a, a decent part to start with is um, how big of a, a loss is Jim Tater to, to Fleetwood squad? Was he a, a vital organ? Um, he is. However, I think he's not as pivotal as people make out because I was expected to lose him this window. So I think that... He is crucial to the way Philippe would want to play and the way that Philippe would are a better side when he's in the team, and that was a fact. But I was prepared to lose him six months ago and to get an extra six months out of him. What feels more annoying is that we haven't replaced him when we knew he'd, we had a bid early on in the window from Ipswich that we rejected. And then now, obviously, Sunderland came out of nowhere on the last day and you know made a, a, a very attractive offer with him out of contract in the summer. Uh, we'd probably only get maybe two hundred grand then because because of his age and because where he's come from, we'd get we'd go to a tribunal. Um, so he is a, when he does play on the page, he is a vital organ, like you say. He's, um, he is a powerhouse at times. I mean, I guess what I'm interested in knowing as well is, is what kind of midfielder is he? Is he box to box? Is he physical? Is he somebody who's going to sit back a little bit? You know, what does he do? Uh, you've just mentioned it there, mate. You've got you've got your box to box. You've got Again, I think he's excellent at that. He's a very, you know, fit lad. I think he's he never stops running. Um, he feeds off the crowd. I think uh, Jay Matete. And when his name's sung, what better place to go to Sunderland when it's going right yeah. uh, for him to feed off? And if he really flourishes, it could go really, really good for him. And um, that's why he's very. He's not, if you look at him, he's not. He's a small player. And he's not built like an Akin Fenoir or a Fabinho. He's more like a Kante. He's very strong on the ball. And he's just glued to the ball at times. And you can't get it off him at times, which is really good. Um, he likes to drive forward. Um, he'll, one thing I like in a midfielder, that they play forward, but also run forward at the same time. Mm. He will do that. And in League One, you need that. And obviously, he's got a couple of you know nice goals this year where Oxford away, you pick them up on halfway, run and literally passed it into the goal like it was a training exercise. The other one was a screamer um, into the top corner. A minute before that, on his left, on his weaker foot, he hit the bar. So he can certainly hit them. And uh, but I'd say powerhouse, strong on the ball, box to box. Um, sometimes like to sit back as well. Yeah, I mean we've really been lacking. I think a little bit solidarity in the middle. A common theme of our season so far, I think, has been that when we can control the game, when we are on top, when we are in possession, and you know when we can be the the better team, we can absolutely decimate any other side at this level. Um, but as soon as the team gets in our face and bullies us a little bit or takes control of the ball a little bit more than us, you know, I, I think we, we we really drop off, and I think we we, we really suffer, and that's why we t tend to win some games by you know five goal margins, but equally lose some by five or six goal margins. I think what we need is is someone to just put a bit of authority on the game, um, potentially a, a strong character, but also someone who's quite physical. Do you think he's got the, the ability and the know-how to kind of, you know, be authoritative and, and, and put put, it, put his own stamp on games when things aren't going our way? Yeah, absolutely. I think you might have lost me then, so I apologise about that. Um, yeah, he has got that. He's one of those that likes to get on the ball. He's liked to get in the final third as well. And he will... Basically, the other two midfielders look. You you do this. I'm going to do this. And sometimes you might need someone with him because he likes to go in free range. And so, sometimes, um, but he's a young player, and I think at Sunderland that will really help his game. That he'll become more of a, a staple player where he's more a seven or eight out of ten every week. And I think if he can do that, he'll go to the top. I do think this move is a. No, I think if Sunderland get it right, I think they can keep Jay Matete and Matete can go through the leagues. If not, I do think this is the springboard for Jay. I think he will go on better than League One. I think he'll go maybe, you know, the Premier League, if not higher championship. Um, but I certainly think he can go to the high, higher league of the championship, if not the Premier League, one day with Sunderland. But in football, anything can happen. 
Yeah, I mean, he's really a young lad. I think I'm just looking here. Only 20 years old. Um, suit to turn 21 in about a week's time, I believe. So he is a young lad. You know, I think we've got a lot of we've got a core of young players at the squad at the moment. I think it's a, it's a common theme we're going with the, the, the recruitment strategy at the moment is to look for younger players who've got the potential to move with the club. Um, as a girl, is there any weaknesses to his game that you've picked up on? Yeah, like you say, you've got a very young squad. I was working out the average age of uh, some 11 the other day, and you were one of the teams that was just below fleet. I think it was, you know, 24. So you have got a a very young squad, and I think I like that. What some of them are doing, I think Mateta will fit in well with that. Uh, weaknesses sometimes maybe doesn't do enough in the final third. However, this is in being pulled back by a, a I don't want to say a poor manager under Simon Grace, and I know you might agree with that, but um, it was it was one of those where he was being he couldn't play his natural game and um, under a better manager, under a better team, I do think that will improve. So I think it's harsh to say he didn't do enough in the final third. I think we'll have to wait six, 12 months to see that, to see if it was just a Fleetwood thing or if it's just, it's not his game. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I think that's one thing we could probably, you know, be all right with if, if we signed a centre midfielder. We don't necessarily need people to go for to be great in the final third. I, I would argue that creating chances is probably the one thing we are best at. Um, you know, especially from midfield, I've got Dan Neal, a centre midfielder who um, I don't know how much you know about him, but he, he, he can get on the ball and, and you know cause a lot of damage going forward. He, he's, his passing range is excellent, he's quite creative. Got the likes of Alex Pritchard and Elliot Embleton who played just off the strike and maybe just out wide as well, a little bit at times, as well as being absolutely packed with wingers. So I think inside the centre midfielder, you know, we don't really need someone to get at the final third. So if that is his only weakness in his game, I think that suits us quite well. Um, just one final thing as well, really. A little bit unrelated to Matiti, but I mean, Fleetwood are sat 19th in the league, only two points above the drop, um, only two points above, above Morgan, who are the highest team in the relegation spots. If you've lost a, a pretty important member to your squad, are you worried that you might, you know, find yourself in a bit of a, a late season relegation scrap? I was worried anyway, mate. Um, no, I don't think we've improved enough, if I'm honest with you. I think Morgan have improving, Wimbledon have improved, you know, they have got a few unwanted players or played out the door for good fees of money. Um, so that's you know good news for them. However, for me, losing a midfielder, I think that means Paddy Lane, one of our best, in my opinion, our best player at the football club. He's only what, 20, 21 years of age right now. He'll go on for two, three, four million pounds, in my opinion. He'll be back in central midfield when he's not that position. Um, and I think we also have a run of games where we play Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich, yourselves, Wigan and Portsmouth. And I go, mm. I can't see a single point. I know yeah. there's always a shot, but you're like, if you go five games and only pick up two points, Morecambe and Cheltenham will not have teams around them. So it's just going to be one of those. I think I totted up at my points prediction. I think I take us to about 48 points going to the last day. So it is going to be a fight. And I just hope we can get through that. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm glad we've signed him. You know, a lot of things you've mentioned there. I think it's a... I'm not. <laughs> the, 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 the type of player that we needed. Um, we needed something extra in the middle of the park. I think we needed someone physical. It seems to be that type of lad. You know, you're saying he can drive forward quite well. He's got good fitness levels. We needed to do a bit more defensive work, I think, as well. Um, looking at the combination of centre midfielders we've got, I think we've got plenty that are decent on the ball, but not many who can sit back and, and do the dirty work and protect the defence. And I think that's why at times we are putting, you know, conceding six away at Bolton, five away at Rotherham, four away at Portsmouth, three away at Sheffield Wednesday, three at Hunter Lincoln, you know, m much more than is, is a reason about to concede. So I hope that, you know, Going into the window, I think one of the one of the things I said we really need to sign is a, a defensive minded centre midfielder, especially someone who's quite quick and athletic. I think with the the factor of being young, that might play into our hands, it might not. Like you say, he could grow with the club, and he could be really good. But you also touched on there that we've got a really young average squad age, and I think maybe a, a little bit of experience in there might help as well because you've got you know a, a lot of young players in and around that area, you know, someone to pass that experience down. So I, I guess we can only wait and see. But I think what you say. Um, it that it does sound like a pretty good signing, but um, Ben, thanks for coming on. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me on, and all the best, uh, you know, Sunderland and Jamie Tete for the future. All the best to Fleetwood as well, and uh, thank you everyone for watching as well. If you haven't already, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are closing on 8,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, uh, please do. So it'll be greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, it is free to do both of those, uh, but we will see you for either Thursday Night Live or whenever we are uploading next. So thank you for watching, and we will see you later. Bye bye.